Hello everyone, welcome back. We continue our lectures on today's lectures on uh, Nesterov uh, momentum algorithm. The next uh, uh, Nesterov uh, momentum algorithm is based on the original momentum algorithm we talk about in the lecture uh, in chapter A, and we also talk about this algorithm as this momentum algorithm in chapter A as well. Okay, so here I give you some general introduction, which we also give uh, <clears throat> gave you in our uh, theoretical lectures. The only thing that change is how we update our momentum, and we just simply stick with the first order momentum, and the v t plus one equals to the beta times. Uh, uh, previous uh, momentum minus alpha times the gradient. The only thing is we're using a <coughs> guessed, uh, uh, we call a projected uh, solution. The projected solution equals the xt plus beta times vt, which is uh, current momentum. We're going to have a projected possible solution and we calculate uh, <coughs> the gradient at the uh, projected point. And then we're using this new <coughs> momentum to update our uh, solution XK, uh, xt plus 1 equals to xt plus the uh, momentum. So that's all there is to it in terms of a theoretical concept. And this is uh, originally proposed in 2013. They call the nest of this accelerated gradient. Uh, we kept the momentum calculation a little bit different. Instead of just using the current uh, gradient at the current point, and we're using a, a gradient at the projected point. Um, so the beta itself is a fix, okay? And beta itself is a fix. Um, <clears throat> so also the new momentum equals to how much we trust the previous momentum or the new uh, gradient as well. Okay. So we're using the same exactly uh, the format we had before, import some of the uh, NumPy libraries and defining our objective function and the its first derivative. And then we plot out a function, and this is another Rosenberg function. Uh, this is the Rosenberg function we have been using. And this is the <coughs> gradient uh, descent algorithm using the Nestroff uh, momentum. All we have to do is for each one of the for loop, we give a projected point, which is a projected solution. And we're using this projected solution uh, to calculate our projected gradient. Okay? So here we have is we, other than that, it's pretty much equal, uh, exactly the same as the RMS prop, uh, I'm sorry, momentum update. So uh, calculated D, uh, Delta X, Delta X equals to the current momentum times Delta X per momentum. This is the beta times the step size times the gradient. Step size is the alpha, actually. Then we update uh, our solution equals to the solution plus Delta X, put it in the value, and we append it for that H, uh, that coordinate. So this loop right here represents all coord each coordinate of x. After we're done with the, all the coordinate, we convert it into a NumPy array, and we calculate its objective function at the new point, and then we check it out if uh, the convergence is criteria is satisfied. The O score, O objective function minus the <clears throat> the new object function is absolute value is less than 10 to minus 5. And then we be done. Otherwise, we 
store the current objective function value into the old uh, objective function value, then we go on to the loop for number of iteration, maximum iteration. N iterate is the maximum allowed iteration we have. <clears throat> So this algorithm, uh, in terms of uh, uh, implementation, is very simple. It's just how you update your momentum. It's definitely from the RMS prop. Okay. So we're going to using the same example uh, to test this uh, uh, natural <coughs> momentum uh, uh, update. Um, set up the C and maxima iteration t uh, 1000 and step size equals to uh, 0 0.001 and momentum equals initial momentum actually it's the beta equals to 0.9 as suggested by the literature. Set the start time timer as run the subroutine and collect the end timer and print out the time delta, which is the difference between end and the style. And this one, we get really lucky as well. And we only took uh, about seven iteration to finish the algorithm with high precision. <clears throat> okay. Uh, time is negligible and also so here is the natural uh, momentum algorithm. And this algorithm, as we show in the, uh, our lecture, it is a very stable uh, algorithm. So people start thinking about once, uh, and also natural uh, momentum is easy to implement. Previously, we talked about <clears throat> this RMS uh, uh, prop or Alta Delta or the eight atom algorithm, they all have their pros and cons. They're really sensitive to their step size and learning, uh, we call the learning rate uh, parameter. <clears throat> and the Alta Data has uh, uh, eliminated the, the fixed the L, uh, step size because we all know in the beginning of the algorithm, we want the step size to be bigger. <clears throat> and after we get closer and closer to the optimal solution, we want the step size to be more conservative instead of uh, jumping around. But this also against some of the <clears throat> intuition for global optimization. What if you have multiple, uh, <clears throat> multiple uh, local minimum, and one of them is a global minimum? If you got trapped in the local minima and your step size is not big enough, <clears throat> and many times your, e your algorithm are easier to get trapped in the local minima without the chance of jumping out. Okay, so there's a, like a, a trade-off between those. If your algorithm you sure is uh, well-behaved one local minima, which is the, and also the global minima. <clears throat> then the step size, uh, conservative step size may be a good choice. But for uh, some unknown uh, objective function, they may have a multiple uh, uh, local minima in which one of them is the global minima. And I will later show you, actually some of the uh, test function we use has a two uh, global minima. Okay, and we also have a similar uh, problems, uh, similar functions in our midterm exam as well. So this gives us some um, basic idea of the pros and cons of a different uh, so-called uh, algorithm and how we tune their uh, hyperparameter. However, the natural momentum algorithm is uh, uh, showing some s numerical stability and works well for different uh, shape of a local minima. Therefore, people start thinking about combining, uh, for example, Rus uh, RMS probe and uh, versus atoms also 
in the recent year. I think it's one is 2018, the other one is 2014. Start <clears throat> developing algorithm, combining atom algorithm with the natural uh, momentum, or they combining uh, <clears throat> uh, combining the RMS prop with the natural momentum. And I think the current version of the TensorFlow <clears throat> uh, deep learning uh, platform uh, uh, sponsored by uh, Google using the uh, 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 Atom algorithm combined with uh, Nestrov as their default. Okay. And I think uh, Facebook also using their version of uh, RMS uh, prop algorithm combining with Nestrov momentum. So people start thinking about these <clears throat> new improvement. <clears throat> we will talk about that in the next couple lecture video. And we talk about two more uh, enhancement for the atom algorithm, which inspired by these combination, what we call the ensemble type of algorithm. Okay, we finish the two short video and we see you in the next uh, lecture video. Bye bye.